ChatGPT Image 1.5 took the top spot on the leaderboards both for AI image generation and AI image editing. It's held the number one spot for a couple of weeks now, but is it really good? And how does it work? Well, let's check it out. To create an image in ChatGPT, you can use a regular new chat. Just describe the image that you want. And if you want to edit an existing image, click the plus button to upload it or drag and drop the image in here that you want to edit. They've also got this new section over here called images. If we click on that, it brings us into this new images page. You can describe the image you want to create. You can click this button here if you want to add photos or images to edit. Below that are some preset style changers. If you have an image you want to restyle into one of these, just click on it, then click choose a new photo to upload your image. It opens up a new chat, pastes in this preset prompt, and then starts creating the image. The new image shows up right here in the chat. You can click to download that. If you want to make changes to it, you just come down here in the prompt box and describe what you want it to change. Below the style presets, they've got some others down here. Reimagine my pet as a human, make a coloring page, style me, remove people in the background, and several other things here. These work the same way. If you click one of them, it wants you to pick a photo either from your recents. I'm not sure what this little square is over here, but this one we just uploaded for that last style preset change is there. Or we can choose a new photo to upload. And just like the style change preset, it brings us into a new chat with the prompt template for whatever we picked and uses that to edit the image that we supplied into this. Now they have been updating these, both the style presets and these other ones here. So if you find one that you really like that's working for you, you might want to go ahead and copy the prompt and save it somewhere. That way, if it disappears from this homepage, you'll still have it, or you should be able to go back into your previous chats and find that prompt that you used before. Below all this stuff is the gallery of images created. If you hover, you get a download button, click on the image and you get a bigger preview and you get a prompt box where you can describe edits and you can also add images to affect those edits. If you wanna see your original prompt or any of the chat history, come up here to the three dot menu, click that and say open in chat. And here we've got the original prompt and the output. And if we had made edits to this, it would show those chat conversations and the images that were produced. Speaking of producing images, let's do that. Up here in the prompt box, I'm just gonna paste in a prompt. This is fairly detailed. The long and the short of it is it's a couple in their 20s sitting at an outdoor cafe on a European style street. And there's a bunch of details and some stuff to just try and give the model the vibe of what's going on here. This model is supposed to like understand the world. So if it can get the vibe, it's better at picking things up. We'll see. To specify the aspect ratio, we need to include that in the prompt. When I ask for 16 by nine, it's gonna give me a three two. If I ask for a nine by 16, it's gonna give me a two, three. Those seem to be what it does. Three, two, two, three, or square one to one. But I'm gonna keep putting it in there and maybe one day it'll do it. Unless we have a reference image to work from, there's nothing else to do here. Prompt and hit the go button. Here's our image, let's click on that, get a bigger preview. And let's see, she was supposed to have short brown hair and hoop earrings, got them, the linen white shirt, that's there. She's holding a cappuccino and a ceramic mug, that's what we asked for. He's supposed to have short brown hair and a neat beard, which he does, and the navy blue sweater. I guess that's an iced coffee. One hand on the table, well, we can see one hand on the table. Assumably the other one's on the table too, but that's okay. The half-eaten croissant on a plate and the sunglasses are there on the table and the two smartphones are there. Both phones are in front of her that's a little odd she doesn't seem like a two phones kind of gal you know one for the plug and well never mind we do have the bike on the green pole back here that we asked for and that's all blurred out in the background the hands on both characters are plausibly accurate and we asked for her to be mid laugh and him to have like a warm smile so i think it got everything that we asked for now let's see how it does with editing. Let's try change her expression from laughing to looking thoughtfully at him. I think we've got a hand problem here. Yeah, sure enough, it changed her facial expression and it put this hand up under her chin, which is great, but it left the hand also here under the coffee cup. So we'll switch back to the original image. And then for the prompt, let's just come over here to the end and we'll add in there, keep her hands, arms, and everything else about the image the same. Maybe if we tell it not to move her arm, it won't come up with an extra hand or leave a hand behind. So up top here's our original prompt, the first image it generated, our prompt to make an edit, and that bad edit with the hand that got left behind. And then here's our new edit, and it is using the original image, not this image. And it looks like it did the same thing this time. Put the hand under the chin, but it left a hand behind under the coffee cup. We can go back to the original image by clicking over here on the right, or we can close this preview, scroll up to the top, and then click on our original image. We'll be a little bit more specific in this prompt, We'll change our second line to keep her hands and arms exactly where they are in the current image. 
only change her facial expression. Okay, did we get it this time? Nope, it did the exact same thing. Moved the arm up, left the hand behind. Something here is just triggering this thing to put her hand up under her chin, and it won't listen when I tell it not to. I wonder if this word thoughtfully is just a trigger word. Let's go back up here to the original image, and instead of looking thoughtfully at him, let's say, it's probably a better way to word this, but I said change her expression from laughing to a neutral expression, hit the go button, and apparently thoughtfully wasn't the key word that was making that happen, because here we go again. Arm and hand moved up, but hand left behind. I wonder if we gave it some direction about both hands. So we'll go back to change her expression from laughing to looking at him thoughtfully, but we'll also add with one hand under her chin and the other hand lifting the cup of coffee off the table. Maybe that'll make it think about the hands and work with the hands and realize it has an extra hand that it's leaving behind. Hey, I think we might have something here. It put her left hand under her chin, it's got the right hand raising the cup up quite a bit higher than it was before, but hey, there's not an extra hand. I guess we can live with that. Now let's try another edit. We'll go ahead and clear this out and then we'll drop in, have him looking at his phone instead of at her. All right, looks like he's got a phone. Both the phones from the table disappeared and he now has one in his hand. And that phone doesn't look like either of the ones that was on the table before. So I don't know, maybe she put her two phones away and he got his phone out. I don't know what this black stuff is between the glass and his hands there, but maybe I should have given it a don't change anything else about this image at the end of this prompt. Let's take this one and do a little clothing change. Swap her into a black turtleneck. That looks like it came out pretty good. I don't see anything else happening from the last one to this one. Let's go ahead and make it bigger. Try and compare here. Is this our last edit? Yep, I think it is. So that got the turtleneck and didn't mess anything up in the process, at least nothing I can see. Now at the risk of having more hand problems, let's go ahead and swap this out and say change her cappuccino to a glass of white wine. Okay, I don't see an extra hand. I think we might've done okay with this one. Now after a few edits, I'm starting to see some noise here, particularly in her face. I think you can also see it in his and maybe down here a little bit. Here's the original image that we created. Now I wanna skip over these that had the extra hand in them because we didn't edit from those, we edited from the original when we created this one. But as we made edits from here to here to here, we are seeing a little bit of quality loss there. Not nearly as bad as it was in previous versions of ChatGPT image editing. Something else that's interesting is ChatGPT used to have a habit of making images more and more yellow with each edit. If we go back to our original, see what the color looks like there, and then we come down to some of our edits here, it's definitely not yellowing. If anything, it's making them a little bit cooler than what that original original image was. Let's do another edit here. We'll say make it evening with warm string lights glowing overhead. Looks like evening. We got some string lights up there. I think she's getting really irritated that he's still on his phone. Let's do one more change here. We'll say have both subjects look directly into the camera and pose for a snapshot. Cool, she's not mad anymore. They're both looking at the camera. Looks like it kept everything else pretty much the same. He still got whatever this black thing is in this hand. Of course, now that I look at that hand, that thumb does not look right. Was it like that in the last one? Not quite, uh, that's a little weird looking too. And actually this finger on this hand is also weird in this one. How about the one before? No difference between those two and no difference between those two. Or back to that one. Okay, so I guess this thumb and hand, that's the way that was from the time we had him start looking at his phone through the edits all the way down until this last one, the pose change, when it went from kind of weird maybe to really weird. I didn't pick up on that when we put the phone in his hand. I noticed this weird black thing, but I'm kind of sick of looking at these people. So let's get out of here. I'll go back over to images on the menu. Let's take a look at some of the other things I've generated with ChatGPT image 1.5. No problems with this casual snapshot at a crosswalk. It's supposed to look like a smartphone capture. I think it did fine with that. For the most part, the street and the intersection isn't super wonky. Doesn't appear that they're on a sidewalk though. It looks like we just walk on the road in this city. But the text and these signs, while it's not perfect, it's less gibberishy than it used to be. It did really well with this food photo of the salad with the olive oil drizzled on the feta cheese on the rustic table. That all looks really solid and crisp. This infographic with a lot of text that was specific that was supposed to be in there, it did well with that, at least with the subject and with the text. Now some of these lines maybe aren't going to the right place, but they're pretty close. Now this color strip across the bottom with the hex colors, I thought that was a little weird because there's some colors here that I don't necessarily see in that image, at least not prominently, unless you look in the design of the t-shirt. But looking back at the prompt, it just said the bottom of the image shows a color palette strip with hex codes. It doesn't say what to do with them, so I can't really blame it for that. Here I had it mock up a mobile app UI. 
Seems like it got all the text right and did fine with the layout. Another food photo, this one an overhead flat lay. And it seems to do really well with these, with the textures, lighting, colors. This glistening bacon over here is making me hungry. In the 3D Pixar style, this grandpa teaching his granddaughter to fish. Lots of expressiveness there in grandpa. That looks really good. Here's a claymation mouse supposed to be carrying a big wedge of cheese through a miniature house. I think it got a little mixed up here. We've got some miniature items in this image, but then we also have some full-size items in relation to the mouse's size, and some that are maybe in between. I don't know. This vintage poster looks pretty cool, complete with a driverless car. I did a magazine cover. I think the way it laid out the text is a little bit amateurish, but you might be able to tune that in with some edits, just describing how you want the text changed. I noticed this price on here, $12.99. I thought, well, that's crazy. But then I realized I don't think I bought a magazine in this millennium, so maybe that's what you pay for them now. I did this recipe card, and the aesthetic is pretty cool. I don't really like three things on one line and then just one thing by itself down here on a line. You might be able to just describe an edit here and have it move number three down to the second line and sort of neaten things up, but given our experience trying to change that lady's facial expression in that first image, we're not going to try that. I hit a speed bump when I try to generate this 1940s film noir. It said I'm generating images too quickly and I need to wait seven minutes before I can generate another one. At that point, I had done about 20 images in a row, back to back, but one at a time. I didn't open up separate windows so I could try and generate multiple images at once. So it was about 20 images and it said, whoa, you need to slow down and tell me I needed to wait seven minutes. And I'm on the plus plan, I think it's called, the one that's 20 bucks a month. So I'm not sure what the limits are for free or plus or whatever that $200 a month deal is that I'm not paying for. But after my time out, I was able to generate the image and I think it came out really good. This is supposed to be from an 80s thriller. He's sitting out in front of a motel in his car. Overall, it did pretty pretty good, but the prom said that there was a cigarette burning in the ashtray, and I guess that's what this fire circle thing is on the dashboard? I've never seen something like that before. And maybe this would be a good candidate for this select area button. Let's give that a shot. We'll click select area and, you know, well, we'll select this area and then describe edits. I don't know. Remove that mess. I'll say remove the circle, fire, and smoke and see what it does. Well, it removed the fire and the smoke, but it left the ashtray on the dash. I wonder if it knows it's an ashtray. We'll give it a shot. I mean, I wouldn't know it was an ashtray except for the flame and smoke coming from it, which of course we just removed. Oh, hey, it looks like it got rid of it. Yep, it's gone. All right, good job. So now we know what that select area deal's about. I wonder if that would have worked to get rid of that lady's extra hand in the first image. Now up here in the prompt, it said the aspect ratio was to be 2.39 to one widescreen. Again, that's not what we got at all. The output size it gave me was 1536 by 1024, which is a 3 to 2. This is supposed to be a still from a 90s indie coming of age drama, and they're supposed to be sitting on the hood of a station wagon in a grocery store parking lot sharing headphones. It totally got the style and quality of the image, all the composition, except for those aren't headphones, those are earbuds, and I don't remember that being a thing in the 90s. Of course, some of the 90s are a bit blurry for me, so this was supposed to be a Henri Cartier-Bresson black and white street photography where this guy is jumping, running over the puddle. And it got a lot of the details, but there's something big wrong here, which is he's going to go face first into this iron fence. And why is he even going that way? And if he needed to, he could just walk around the puddle. So I told it the man should be moving in the same direction as the other people on the street. This image would have him jumping into the fence. And here's the edit it came back with. It's got him looking like he might be able to avoid running into the fence and a little bit closer to walking in the flow of traffic but it still doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Now this paparazzi photo with the tabloid watermark, this came out really well. The subject looks plausible, the other cameras in the area sets us up in that paparazzi vibe along with this really bright lighting and the valet or whatever blurred over here in the background, the motion blur, that looks good. This snapshot's supposed to be from a 1990s disposable camera. My favorite I think is the finger or thumb or whatever that is out here in front of the lens, that's great. And I didn't tell it to put the text Florida on her t-shirt, but it did and it seems to have spelled it right. I did have it tucked in in the high-waist jean shorts and, of course, the Disney castle. 
and it has the little girl squinting when we take the snapshot because, you know, that's how family snapshots go. This is supposed to be a cinematic still from a 2003 urban crime drama. It covered all the details that I asked for, the subject, the style, the color, the overall vibe. I'm digging it. Here's another made up movie scene still from a 96 summer action blockbuster that never happened. I would probably title this a bad day at the airport, but our hero's here, so he's going to save the day. The idea for this corporate headshot was to have it be like technically perfect from a photography standpoint, but to also have human quirkiness come through too. So like it's the fourth take of this image after he's had a long, exhausting day and he's a little bit just out of sorts here. And I think ChatGPT did really well at picking up that whole vibe and bringing it through in the image or photograph. I say photograph because this looks really, really realistic to me. In this concert photo, this is our lead singer and she's supposed to be leaning over the barrier. She's got one hand on the mic and one hand reaching out toward the photographer. But ChatGPT gave her an extra hand. So she's got one behind her. Then she's got one arm reaching out with the hand. But that arm also has another hand that is holding the mic. Speaking of hands, I think this hand from the crowd here is a little bit close and she's already on the verge of a wardrobe malfunction. We don't have a visible crowd barrier and the eyes, yes, we did want the makeup there running, but there should be eyes in there somewhere and I think we'd want to just see some of them. So I tried to edit that. I said she has too many hands. I thought maybe simple would work and it didn't. It took out some of the crowd hands, which is good, and fingers, but it kept all three of her hands in place. Then I tried something a little more specific, told her to remove the hand that's reaching out toward the photographer, just to have her holding the microphone with the one hand on that arm. And he came up with this and I think it looks really weird. Just for fun, I ran this prompt through Nano Banana Pro and this is what it generated on the first shot. I still think our performer is a little bit too wet and dirty and it'd be nice to see eyes in there, but it didn't give her extra hands. It put the crowd barrier that we asked for and I don't know, they're both weird. Here's another attempt at a retro 90 snapshot. Now he's supposed to be playing a Nintendo 64 in front of an old CRT TV. We got the kid, we got the TV and plausibly, a Nintendo 64-ish kind of game, but that's not a Nintendo 64 controller or console, and unless he has an eye poking out of his right ear, I don't know how he's playing that game. So I told it the person should be facing the TV and the controller should be a Nintendo 64 controller plugged into a Nintendo 64 console with Nintendo 64 cartridges nearby. And well, I got one out of three. It basically just turned him 90 degrees to face the TV. After my seven minute timeout, I generated some more images and I got put in a 25 minute timeout. And that seemed like a good time to be done for the day. So I didn't go back and create that one. Now I don't know what the limits are, how many images you can generate in what period of time or if that's posted anywhere. I don't think I'd be in a hurry to get a paid subscription to ChatGPT just for the images. It's not bad. Some of the images came out pretty good. I prefer Nano Banana Pro, but that's just my opinion. Hey, my name's Bob. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining, and I hope you'll come back and join me for another video.